Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. All right, so it is now official. Online sports betting is live in Michigan, and we're going to have a breakdown of what you can expect. And now, while we must remain vigilant and cautious, we can lift some protocols that were previously in place. But first, we're following breaking news from Governor Whitmer. Indoor dining set to continue across the state on February 1st. That story tops our news at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Evrod Kasimi. The state's Health and Human Services Department issued its new order that will ease some of the current restrictions. So starting February 1st, here's what we're looking at. Restaurants and bars can continue indoor dining at 25% capacity and with no more than 100 people. Also, concessions can be served at entertainment venues and personal services that require mask removal will be allowed. Grant Herms joins us now live this afternoon. And Grant, the governor says that science led to this decision. Everett, that's right. They say that the state's big three COVID numbers, that's the case rate, the positivity rate, and hospitalizations are all looking good, heading in the right direction. But this reopening will look a little different compared to what we saw over the past summer. The announcement today, a welcome sign that Michigan may finally be getting ahead of the virus. The new 21 day order starting February 1st lets restaurants reopen at 25% capacity with no more than 100 people. Seated dining only with no more than six people at a table. Establishments must take down information for contact tracing and dining has to end at 10 p.m. Outdoor dining will also still be allowed this time with four walled tents that allow diners from different households to gather. The state also announcing an official safer dining program connecting contractors with restaurants and bars to upgrade ventilation systems to be COVID safe. Those establishments will be given this brand new COVID safe seal. Today, Governor Whitmer and the state's top doctor, Janae Khaldun, optimistic but still warning there is still a risk. I know this pandemic has hurt our restaurant owners, our restaurant workers, and all of their families. I want to thank those that made incredible sacrifices and did their part on behalf of our protecting our communities from COVID. And remember that just because something is open, it does not mean that it is 100% safe or that you should do it. So please, everyone, do be smart. We all have our part uh, to play in ending this pandemic. And Everett, as you said earlier, this reopening does also include places like casinos. It includes places like movie theaters, as well as other entertainment venues. And coming up at 5 o'clock tonight, I'll have more on what Michigan's restaurants are saying about that February 1st date. Back to you. All right. We'll definitely love to hear about that. Thank you, Grant. We want to get to you even more breaking news at this hour. Baseball great Hank Aaron has died at the age of 86. The Hall of Famer and one time home run king passed away this morning. That's according to his daughter. Aaron overcame death threats and hate mail on his way to breaking Babe Ruth's home run record in 1974. In 2002, President Bush awarded Aaron with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Muhammad Ali once said that Aaron is the one man that he idolized more than himself. Even more breaking news at this hour from Detroit's West Side, where police are investigating a dog mauling. Take a look at new video from the scene. It's right near Fullerton and Wildermere. We're told that as a man was walking by a home when several dogs came from inside, he was attacked. A neighbor says that he was able to distract the dogs and get the man away from them. The extent of the victim's injuries, that hasn't been released just yet, but we do have calls into police and we do expect an update sometime this afternoon. Even more breaking news on your Friday, the article of impeachment against former President Donald Trump will arrive at the Senate on Monday. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer make that announcement this morning on the Senate floor. Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says that he had hoped the former president would have more time to prepare. Last week, as you know, the House impeached Donald Trump on a single charge of incitement of insurrection in connection with this month's deadly Capitol riots. In the meantime, the Senate has voted to confirm President Biden's nominee for Defense Secretary, retired General Lloyd Austin. In a 93 to 2 vote, General Austin will be the first black American to lead the Pentagon. In the meantime, we have new details for you this afternoon on how President Biden plans to help people who are struggling financially because of the pandemic. Tracy Potts is in Washington for us with the next steps that are being announced today. Nation waiting for action. Let me be President Biden offering hope. Help is on the way. And a warning. We're still in a dark winter of this pandemic. 
It's going to get worse before it gets better. He's predicting half a million COVID deaths by next month. This executive order I'm signing. Rolling out two new orders today to provide economic relief. One expands food stamps and other government assistance, including direct payments to the neediest Americans. It pauses debt payments for veterans and underscores the right to turn down jobs that put a person's health at risk. The second order establishes a $15 minimum wage for federal workers. The White House says he's eager to work with Republicans. They're looking for engagement. They're looking to have a conversation. They're looking to have a dialogue. And that's exactly what he's going to do. But Republicans question the president's priorities. The president can and should refocus his administration on creating good paying American jobs. And the price tag. We have to get serious about how we're spending taxpayer dollars. We already have more than $27 trillion in federal debt. Biden wants millions vaccinated quickly. Getting 100 million people vaccinated in the first 100 days is quite a reasonable goal. But at least a dozen states say they don't have enough vaccine. Tracy Potts, Local 4. All right, thank you, Tracy. Right now here at home, moments ago, online sports betting and casino games went live right here in Michigan. The launch comes a year after sports betting became legal in our state. Local 4 Business Editor Rob Maloney joins us now live outside of MGM Grand Casino in Detroit. And Rob, this is the day that Michigan sports fans have been waiting for. Yeah, it is. A lot of it's not just sports fans. And let's be clear about this, Everett. What it does is it takes the casino and puts it on your phone because it can be both sports and online gambling. And uh, so that's one of the things that uh, people need to understand about all of this. And so uh, one of the other things that you need to understand is that you're going to end up going through a casino to do this. You don't have to physically go there, but you're going to be using the casino's facilities to do that. And so what this Michigan Gaming Control Board has done is, uh, is marry the casino with a differing online app that you would download on your phone. So let's go over how that works at the MGM Casino that you're, they're using Roar Digital. At Motor City, they're using FanDuel. At Greektown Casino, they're using Penn Sports Interactive or Barstool Sports. But at Greektown, it's internet sports betting only. Now, there are seven other tribal casinos that are approved with this as well. They are using a number of apps like DraftKings, Golden Nugget, and Win. And so a lot of people want to know, okay, well, what is the big deal? Well, I found a guy, his name is Dan Kilbridge. He is an online uh, internet gaming expert he's from michigan and this is what he has to say about what changed at noontime i think it's the the dawn of a new era in michigan sports betting i mean when you see uh just i think the interest level will very much surprise uh a lot of people who weren't aware of all this gambling interest going on um, behind closed doors for for so many years and uh, similar to the state you know legalizing marijuana several years ago. Um, it's a way to regulate a business that already had uh, billions of dollars coming through it. They just weren't going to the state. Now, remember that when you go and you download one of these apps, they're going to be asking you for a lot of information and they're going to be looking to connect to the GPS unit in your phone because you can only bet in Michigan physically in the state. So even if you're on the state line, you won't be able to do it. You've got to be physically in the state of Michigan, and they measure that by checking your phone. The other thing, there's a chance that you're going to have to give your social security number as part of the uh, sign-in process for one of these apps. The attorney general says you need to be careful with these online apps and read the fine print about what it is that you're signing up for because she says that there could be a lot of disappointment here depending on how you get credits and the way you pay for things and that kind of thing. And so uh, she says, be wary, be concerned, check it out before you get involved. And so there's a lot to talk about. We'll have more coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Reporting live in Detroit, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Great advice, Rod. A lot of people just very still excited to see it happen here in our state. Thank you so much. Let's get a check of your forecast now. Meteorologist Brandon Rue is standing by for us on your Friday with a look at what's ahead for your weekend forecast. Hey, it's Friday and we are celebrating that for sure. Not the greatest weather day, but it don't matter. It's Friday. We have middle 20s to upper 20s, and these numbers have just gradually dipped through the day. Northwest winds are 7 to 17, and so we have wind chills like Pontiac 8 
degrees. That's what it feels like on the exposed skin. Teens elsewhere, so make sure you are uh, layered up. And we've been seeing some pretty hefty snow bands, especially over southern Ontario. They get a little influence from crossing over the lakes and some of the heavier snows are there. The rest of it is just a little nuisance flakes coming and going through the rest of the day as temps again gradually dip. The wind stays up there. So a chilly end to the week. Evrod, we're talking weekend sun and snow coming up. Uh, a little bit of both. Brandon, thank you. Dr. John A. Khaldun says that Michigan is seeing a decline in coronavirus-related cases and hospitalizations. But across the country, a contagious strain is overwhelming hospitals. So up next at noon, we'll tell you why scientists are fearing that the worst is yet to come.